want to introduce Jim. Uh, um, uh, Jim. Jim is somebody that is he's a collector. Uh, he is uh, an author. He is uh, uh, the owner of Excelsior Brigade, which deals in fine Civil War memorabilia. Um, one of the uh, one of the things I love best about Jim is that he also uh, is unafraid to take on big, big, big projects. Uh, and the one he's going to talk about tonight, the Arlington National Cemetery project, um, systematically going through uh, 440,000 servicemen and women that are buried, um, looking for all the Civil War veterans and uh, documenting and confirming them uh, is a massive undertaking. And uh, he is uh, in the middle of that and uh, is gonna talk about his methodology. So, thanks so much. Okay, thank you, Ron. Uh, and, and I'm going to try and keep everybody on the time schedule so we'll get you out of here. Uh, this, uh, this project, I never intended to do it. It was not something I was looking forward to do. But every Memorial Day, I go out there and I visit uh, buddies of mine that I serve with that aren't around today. And I was going out uh, to visit a fellow that was killed by terrorists on the Lockerbie flight. A Van Am flight, a buddy of mine, and when I walked out there, I went by these graves here, and you notice they're unknown. What's interesting, this is a Union soldier unknown, this is a Confederate soldier unknown. To be at that part of the cemetery, which this was called the Field of the Dead, this is Section 13, it was just interesting to find two unknown soldiers sitting there side by side and it said I wonder if anybody's ever identified the soldiers that are there at Arlington that served in the Civil War I knew about this site this is the uh, the first tomb of the unknown soldiers at Arlington there's approximately 2,111 soldiers buried here they are um, there are some Confederates, there are some Union soldiers because they didn't know who they were. They're from the, the Washington, D.C. area, all the battles that were fought close to this uh, area. Um, so they would just pick up the bones. We saw the one image that uh, somebody showed this evening from Cold Harbor of uh, there's a stretcher with all these bones and skulls. Well. Sheila Bond, who's sitting in the second row there, is a docent at the Arlington House, told me that through, the, through their teaching, one of the things they tell them, the way they got to this number was a number of skulls that were put in there. So there's probably a lot more than that 2011 because they just didn't have their skulls there. The first uh, soldier, William Christen from the 67th Pennsylvania, was buried in May 13th, 1864. So that's when the cemetery is starting. Uh, and wouldn't you know it, if you study history, more guys died of disease than for battle wounds. Measles got uh, old Mr. Crispin. The very next day, on the 14th, was the first battle casualty from a, a soldier, William Blatt, from the 49th Pennsylvania. And he was uh, mortally wounded in the Spotsylvania battle and then uh, died and was buried on the fourth, on the fourteenth. So here's the project. Uh, again, I didn't know what I was stepping into. <laughs> this is Arlington, broken up into different sections. They're called uh, gardens. It's uh, 624 acres. There are seven. There are 72 gardens, and that's growing because they're adding on. They're knocking down the. Uh, part of the old Marine Corps base, Henderson Hall. Oh, yeah. That has gone away, the Navy yeah. Annex has gone away, and my wife and I worked in the Navy Annex, it'll be our luck that we'll get buried right where we're off. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so they're, they're expanding a little bit, but at the end of the day, you can only go so far. So it's gonna end at some point, you're not going to uh, be able to add any more to it. But there are 400, and it's growing, approximately 440,000 
graves that are there. So here's a better way to look at it. You can see each of these little white stones, it might be hard to see from the back, but each one represents a soldier or a member of his family uh, at some time. This is just a small section of the cemetery. But what does this really represent? Well, to me, it's this. Each one of those stones has a story. Each one of these people that you see here, here's a female who was a nurse uh, and received an army uh, pension. Uh, each one of these faces here is buried at Arlington. Each one of these soldiers. And, and this is my project, but now I'm giving it to you. It's your project. <laughs> at the end of the day, what I'm looking for are more of these to put with the stone because when uh, Ron's going to help me get this thing published, <coughs> What we want to do is tell the story of each soldier, their military service, and try and put a photo uh, next next to that story. So it's an ongoing process, but each one has a story. Unfortunately, they're not all good stories. Today, you think about Arlington, you think the best go into it. Our men and women who've served in uniform are going in there and they've done uh, honorable service. And that wasn't quite the story for all of these. There's murderers in there who were executed and then buried at Arlington. There are deserters who died after the war are buried in there. So it's a, com a real combination. And unfortunately, Arlington, the Army owns the uh, Arlington Cemetery. They don't have any records that you can go to Arlington and tell soldiers that served in the Civil War, soldiers okay. that served in Korea or Vietnam or World War II, there's not a, they don't keep records that way. So <laughs> this is what uh, I thought I was walking into. This is a Confederate stone. You can see it has a pointed uh, top there. So folklore is they're pointed so no Union soldier could ever rest his rear end sitting on one of these stones. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Union uh, stone. Notice the shield on the stone. That's typical of the Civil War, the Indian War period, and the Spanish-American War. So if I was just walking through looking for stones that have a shield on it, I don't know really what served, what war is this from, so I'd have to go research that. So this is what I was hoping for. Also, before I forget, uh, a lot of them on the bottom have a date. Some of the dates that I found on the Civil War stones were not the date of death. It was the date they buried them. So you have to go back and verify what is the date of death. That's what I wanted to find. This is what I'm actually finding. These are actual stones there at Arlington, and you can see you can't read anything on them. So that's reality on what weather has done to some of these stones. And slowly but surely, the Army tries to replace them, but it's uh, they're having their hands filled right now just taking care of uh, what's happening today. Then you find this. Wow. This is not the same tree. These are two different trees, but wow. here is a stone that's soon there'll be nothing left of it, and there's one where they're is nothing left of it. Wow. So how do I identify those guys? Well, wow. one of the things is, here's that same stone here. I'll take the next stone in a row, find the number on that stone, do research, and then what they did try to do is sequentially number them. Mm -hmm. So then I can go, I'll find that number, and try and go through um, the uh, quartermaster general internment records, you just can't use one source. You have to go through multiple sources to try and identify them. It's much like the photo sleuth. There's not just one source. You're going to have to look at multiple to find out who that guy is. And unfortunately, there are a number of, a number of them that I only have partial information that I just can't find uh, who he is or who she is, and the Army doesn't maintain those records. Then I find stones like this where you think, well, wow, there, there you go. Um, those are perfect. They have the name, the unit, and the, and the date on them. You should be good to go. Well, I'll tell you, it's not that easy, of course. <laughs> Here's a guy in 112. I just 
uh, wrote a couple years ago a book on 112th New York that just turned out, and I said, I don't remember that name. Well, it turned out it's not the 112. This guy actually happens to be from the sixth main, but when they replaced this stone, this is a new stone. The original stone was so worn, somebody took a guess and they said, man, it looks like Maine to me, and uh, or it looks like New York to me, and uh, came up with the 112, but he's actually the sixth main. So wow. we are documenting the correct information to put into the book. This is a very interesting one. It says 26 Regiment USCT, United States Colored Troops. So I looked through the regimental to find uh, who this soldier is, and I couldn't find him. I said, this is strange, but knowing Arlington, they could just have the wrong unit. Maybe it's just US regular army or US volunteers couldn't find them. Went through all the Union states, couldn't find them. I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do on them. For some reason, I said, let me look at Confederates. Turns out, this is a Confederate from Georgia. He was with the 26th Georgia, and it's a black soldier. What had happened, an interesting story with him, what had happened that this fella was conscripted into the Confederate Army. I'm sure as a laborer at first, and then toward the end of the war, they were, they were put in uh, some of the defensive positions. He had an opportunity to go over to the Union lines, and he did so. But when the Union got him, they took him as a prisoner. So they took him as a Confederate soldier as a prisoner. They sent him up to the prison camp up in this area, and on in route to come up to DC, he became ill. So Washington, which was full of hospitals, they sent him to the one of the hospitals, and he died. So I'm sure the hospital stewards there saw a black soldier, saw on his hospital card the 26, and thought, oh, well, he must be 26 USCT. So he is buried as a Confederate soldier, buried with the Union stones, and surrounded by a bunch of Yankees there. The <laughs> so those are the type of things that you think they're good, but they're not. It just takes a lot of research and you can't rely on that one one source. And this is what I have to do. Uh, this is a stone that's being replaced, and I'm down there trying to capture, this is uh, section 13, known as the field of the day. And here's my, uh, my two enemies. It's Mother Nature destroying the stones, or, or the trees swallowing the stones, and then human error. It just that one person who, um, had to type the records for the Army at the time, the quartermaster records, just typed in the wrong, or not typed, they wrote in the wrong uh, information. Then in 1952, the Army decided they're gonna change all those records that they had. They're gonna get some poor soldier who's gonna sit there with the typewriter and start typing. And he's probably like me, who was an infantryman and never had a typewriter before, and he's doing this, and they typed in wrong information. So what has happened, you'll find a record, it'll have bad information on it. And then find a grave will take that information and it's bad information now. And the quartermaster record it is bad information. So once it starts, once it starts, it's hard to find the truth any longer. So the National Archives, that team there has just been a tremendous uh, amount of help. And uh, I'm not sure that we could even do this project if I didn't live here. Close proximity to the cemetery and close proximity to uh, the National Archives. But when you can only pull 24 records a day and you have 440,000 graves to go to, it takes a while. Now we've narrowed that down. I will tell you that it looks like the final number for Civil War soldiers we're going to find there is between uh, 13 to 14,000 soldiers. Wow. That's not counting the thousand of unknown, but I don't know if they're unknown from Civil War or unknown from the Spanish-American War or the Indian War, but they all use the same shield, but it's just 
is unknown. And some of the unknowns have nine soldiers there or five soldiers there. It's not just a single soldier. Okay. So what's the process? Well, the first one is I have to walk through and check each and every stone out. The reason is I was there a couple of years ago for many of you know Henry Deeks. He had a relative that was being buried there and asked me to attend for the family. I got there early and I decided to walk to the uh, graveyard and I saw a stone in the middle of an area that was just started in the 70s with the shield on it. I said, that can't be. And I walked up and it was a Civil War soldier who was re in 1972 from New Jersey who had the Medal of Honor. So I said, oh no, that means I have to walk in front of every single stone in that cemetery, not only the areas that I felt towards the Civil War period, but the entire cemetery between Sheila and my wife. We have done that, we finished that process, and we've collected everybody. So we have to start a data, a database to collect that information, and then we have to validate the data, and I can go on and on and on about that. Research each and every soldier at the National Archives. We pull every soldier's record. We pull their pension records. We validate that data using other sources, uh, such as the regimentals at the time, just to verify dates. If you can get a soldier's record, and it'll tell you that he enlisted in the service, and in five cards looking at his record, you'll have five different dates. So you have to try and validate that data. And then, writing, telling each each soldier's story, and it, they all deserve it. They all deserve that time so we don't forget them. And here's where I need your help. Photographs. If you have any photographs of any soldiers, any females that served in the, in the hospital floor at that time, that you think might have been, uh, might be buried at Arlington Cemetery, please contact me and let me know. Ron has been very gracious that he has an article in each of his magazines on the hollow ground that tells the story of one of those soldiers that is buried at Arlington. Now, I'm still trying to get the photographs from him. <laughs> so, um, please, if you look at that, it has my contact information in there. And if you have anybody that's there, we've had people call us up and say, hey, my relative is there, and I have this information about it that we did not have, that we've added. We'd love to hear from you. That's, wow. that's my project that I hope is your project. <laughs> <laughs> Would GAR records help for anybody who might have requested or been buried back in the Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we, we look at um, every source we can get. If we, the Navy records are very difficult for us, finding the ships that they served on. The regular Army is extremely difficult. Actually, it's the state services are the best, yeah. are the best for us. But uh, we have, and we have soldiers buried there from just about every country you can think of. Uh, Europe is well represented. Canada, there's a ton of guys that uh, came uh, from Canada to serve. So it'll be interesting at the end of the day to do the um, the research on yeah. what countries are represented and what percentage of them are here at Arlington. Over 20 women served in the Army at the time, I did not know this, that have pensions from the United States Army as nurses. So we're, we're finding more and more. We're learning a lot every day. Thank you. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. We've, uh, we've been able to find some photographs uh, at, the, at the Library of Congress. Um, we've been able to find some photographs just uh, Friday. We were at the National Archives in the pension file. We found a couple of photographs. So slowly but surely, we are, we are finding some. And we have contacts at the Library of Congress and the archives uh, that are continuing to look for us. Well, Jim, thank you so very much.